Hey, what's up guys, Bashiri here. So this is gonna be a little bit different of a, of a gym IRL video than I've done before because uh, I recorded all this myself, so the camera angles are gonna be kind of weird and uh, I didn't really get a chance to talk like during the actual workout, so we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> Try something new, why not? So uh, what I'm gonna start off with my, my leg days is uh, really, really low weight squats uh, just to get warmed up. I do go pretty deep on these squats because I've seen a lot of comments suggesting that I do so, so. I've decided to try to lower my weight and really uh, dig in with the, the form and really focus on the, the stretching and contracting of my muscles. Um, because this is, after all, leg training. This isn't really leg go to the gym and show off. This is trying to find that balance between that weight that's challenging enough for you, but being able to still maintain your good form so you can get the most out of the, the motion itself. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I will start off with just, you know, put 245s on the side and uh, do as many sets of, I don't know, like 12 to 15 squats until you actually really feel warmed up and feel ready to go. I play real like catch and go with my warm ups at least. Uh, I mean, I'll even do bench and stuff to warm up. I'll do some pull ups depending on how sore I am from the day before. Uh, I don't want to like try to train the same muscle group that I trained before, but hey, I mean, if I need to do some push-ups, if I need to, need to do some pull-ups in order to, to get my body warmed up to the point where I can work out the way that I want to, I really don't have anything against that. But as you can see here, I've slapped on a 225s, uh, one on both sides, and it's still not a whole lot of weight, but honestly, right now with, the way, with where my legs are, this is really a fine working weight for me. Uh, as long as I get real low and really try to engage, even my, I mean, the, the quads will be engaged regardless. And I'm trying to get my hamstrings, even my butt and my hips involved in this motion. And I don't, I don't have my shoes on right now. That's not just because, you know, I want to be a weirdo. It's like, I mean, I, I feel like I get a lot more control out of my leg contractions without shoes on. So, I mean, there, it's, it's Friday. That's one of the reasons I'm filming is there's, there's nobody in the gym on Friday afternoon slash evening. So I'm able to do whatever the fuck I want to do in the gym. So I take my shoes off. I'm doing legs by myself in the gym on Friday, recording some uh, some IRL for you. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, here, as you can see, I'm still trying to drop my butt real low, and I'm not I'm not you know bringing the bar over my knees like in front of them. I'm really trying to stick my butt out in terms of like backwards, so I can get a real nice deep squat going on. And my feet at this point, uh, as I get heavier, sometimes I bring my feet a little bit wider than shoulder width, but my feet are always pretty much shoulder width. And I'm really trying to focus on pushing off, like through the ground with my heel. I'm not trying to stand up as much as I'm trying to push my legs down through the ground. And of course, I mean, uh, usually not going to be able to do that. So <laughs> what ends up happening is you stand up. But you really want the power from your hips and your butt and your hamstrings to be driving down through the floor. And that's what powers your upward motion. So that's just something that I tend to think about. And hey, if I'm going to be doing commentary over an 18-minute uh, IRL gym video, I can talk about whatever I want to talk about, so <laughs> if I'm going to talk about driving your uh, heels down through the floor, because that's what's something that helps me out to power through some even lightweight squats, because uh, I feel like my legs are a little bit behind, though. that's what I'm going to do, so. But yeah, I do feel like my legs are a little bit behind the rest of my uh, muscle groups. Like I've said before, my legs and my shoulders are kind of uh, the, one, the, the muscle groups that have suffered because uh, I was both a runner and I was a growing boy. So my shoulders, I never really did a whole lot for them because uh, if I put a lot of focus into them, they would tend to hurt and I didn't really want to mess up my joints while I was growing. But uh, I've, I mean, I'm 23 years old now. My shoulder joints feel nice and nice and strong so I can really start putting some, some good reps into my shoulders. And uh, I was a runner for the longest time, and uh, if you couldn't tell, I put on body mass quite easily in terms of muscle, so if I did a lot of legs, then uh, my legs would just get big and they wouldn't really help me in terms of my running, so. Plus, running hills and running 70 miles a week was plenty of leg work for me, so I never really got in the habit of lifting legs, um, but since I stopped running so much, uh, I feel like my legs really need some extra attention, um, especially considering how much weight I'm putting on on like, you know, my chest and my back and my arms, so. Really want to try to get my legs going. Plus, I mean, legs are just a key component to your overall strength and well-being and muscle growth. I mean, like, when you put in a, a huge leg day, uh, I mean, all that, I mean, your legs are huge muscles. And so all of that testosterone and HGH or whatever is released by uh, your body in, in, in an attempt to repair your muscles, that doesn't just go to your legs. I mean, that's going through your whole system. So if you want to build a strong back, if you want to build a strong chest, if you want to build big arms, I definitely recommend doing legs it's not the most intuitive thing out there but I don't know it's kind of ironic enough that I'll I'll definitely let you know that <laughs> I'll definitely say it out loud so 
here I'm doing, what is this, about 215 squats, really? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, like, 14-year-olds can squat more than me, and my hat's off to you, but uh, I'm a 215-pound dude, and, you know, you guys make fun of me for having small legs, so it's not mostly in my legs, so I'm, I mean, I'm squatting a, a good amount of weight here, I feel like, but it's definitely nothing like, you know, over 300 for rep squats, I mean, and that's what I'm saying, is I'm, I'm in here, I'm doing, I'm doing some leg training, I'm not trying to impress you guys, uh, because you understand, I mean, I'm, I'm here to try to try to get my my work done, and uh, if I can, if I feel like I can get the most work done at uh, 215, if I can feel, if I feel like I can do 10 reps of 215 is going to do more for me than one and a half, two reps of 315, and then that's that's what I'm going to do. So ultimately, I, I usually ladder about up to I don't know 225 to 275, depending on how good I feel. I do about two reps at each little weight bracket, and I go up by 20. And then at the end of it all, I come back down. So here's me finishing up my squats for the day. And I've all got all the way back down to, to just that what we started with, 135. And uh, I'm just going to do some real good form squats. These ones feel pretty good because you're already your legs are already pretty tired from laddering all the way up to... I only did 225 today. Ladder up to 225, doing two reps at each at each little weight bracket of 20. And then, uh, I mean, not, not two reps, two sets of, you know, decreasing reps. I think I only did six reps at 225 today. Um... But regardless, at the end of it all, you just throw some light weight on and really try to interact with that with that good form again. Because as I get heavier uh, on the weight, sometimes I feel like my form suffers a bit. So it's good to come back down and really get the nice stretch and squeeze going that you were initially starting with in terms of your warm-up. So it's a little bit of a warm-up and cool-down. Plus, I feel like you can get a lot done if you really focus on squeezing your, your leg muscles and contracting those muscles and stretching them after you have fatigued them, going all the way up and then back down in terms of your squat weight so after all this oh and by the way like you, you guys if, if you know what you're talking about please critique me on my form tell me what i'm doing wrong i saw a lot of comments saying i wasn't going uh, deep enough on my squats so i decreased my weight and really try to go deeper on my squats and i guess it's helping so thanks um and deadlift is an exercise i don't feel super confident on and if my form is just atrocious don't just be like oh my god i vomited and i can't watch this video uh what you should do is you should tell me specifically things that i can do in order to improve my deadlift form because Exercises like deadlifts and squats are crucial to muscle building and, uh, and strength building and just fitness in general. So they're great things and I really want to make sure I'm doing them right. I don't want to hurt my back and uh, I want to, you know, that, that's a negative thing. I want to avoid negative things like injuries, but I also want to get the most out of the exercise that I can. I really want to try to build a strong back and I know that, I know deadlifts do build your upper back, but the main reason I do them on my leg day is because I want to try to, you know, supplement my squats with a little bit of deadlifting for my hamstrings and continuing to help my, my butt and my hips get stronger so that's the main reason I'm doing deadlifts so if you can give me some pointers on terms of how to do deadlifts to more uh, effectively target like your hamstrings then uh, by all means I want to hear it because I don't go super heavy on deadlifts either it's the same deal here I'm really trying to focus on form I'm really trying to to focus mentally on uh, contracting the muscle groups that I want to have be involved in this exercise so I'm really trying to squat a little bit right off the right off the beginning and then use the rest of the way to pull with my hamstrings and my butt all the way up to the top so I think right here I'm, on, I'm still doing like my, my warm-up weight which really really isn't that much farther away from or isn't really that far away from my my ultimate weight that I'm gonna max out with which is like only 225 today uh, but yeah I mean if I'm if I'm feeling like I can get enough of my workout done at 225 and I'm, I'm gonna if be pushing it if I go much over 225 then there's really no point in me doing it so just trying to get some good deadlifts uh now I know that there's some experts out there but for those people who are watching this video for my advice uh, one of the things I, I focus on is uh at the bottom here you see I kind of well I guess I just finished that set so come on man get another set in there I don't talk about this so I put on a little bit more weight my form is already gonna suffer I feel like but regardless I try to get pretty low here and I try to use the same principle that I was using before is pushing down through the floor. So I squat a little bit. Once I get to my knees, well, are, are pretty straight. Then I start pulling with my hamstrings and my butt. And I really try not to have my back too involved. I really just try to keep my arms straight. And it's all all it's doing is the weight is just hanging, and I'm gripping it with my with my wrists and my forearms and my legs and, and butt and back are doing all the actual muscle work involved in this exercise and I'm not really going all that fast sometimes I feel like if I put a bazillion pounds on there I can just like crank out the reps and and that's that's fine I guess but I don't know if I'm getting as much out of the exercises if I do it real slow 
and really focus on pulling with my hamstrings more than anything, so. But yeah, that's the kind of thing that I think about, is, is driving through the floor, down with your heels, and uh, I feel like that helps me really, that, that visualization really helps me involve my hips my butt and my hamstrings in this because it's easy to train quads I feel like I feel like quads are like the muscle that's gonna grow the most in your legs and uh, hamstrings are the ones that's probably gonna grow the least so you really got to try to focus on getting your hamstrings involved in these exercises and little visualizations like that are some of the things that help me out I'm able to help you guys out as well so yeah I'm sorry I'm not showing you like my entire workout but like I didn't want to be that that weirdo asshole who's just gonna like sit there and film his entire workout but plus, I mean, like, my camera is going to run out of room. We don't have, like, XD card. But so basically what I'm doing is I'm showing you <laughs> the earlier parts of my of my sets where my form probably looks a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, it's, maybe it's not as impressive in terms of weight, but at least you're getting a good picture. If you guys are watching these videos for a learning experience, like, those are the best. That's the best form I can give you in terms of my recommendations. So I didn't go all the way up and I didn't go all the way back down on camera. But uh, that's pretty much what I end up doing is, is I do squats and then I transition at, after, I, after I pyramid up and pyramid back down. I do some deadlifts with the same principle and then I'll hop over to this machine and I'll do some... This, these, are, these are lighter weight than I, uh, than I did at the end because at the end my muscles have actually recovered a little bit from the pressing mo movement uh, from all the squats and deadlifts. But, uh, so I'll start off with doing some, some leg press where I really try to focus on involving the even still the bottom of my legs there so I'll, I'll really focus on pushing with my heel um i don't know if i did it here i think i was probably just trying to crank out the reps but after i get about you know 10 15 done then i'll do uh some calf raises this is where i get this is where i get the the, the majority of my my calf exercises done is on this machine um sometimes i'll do like calf raises on the smith machine while i'm resting from uh just like squats or deadlifts i just do on the smith machine because i, I just fuck it why not um but here, I'm just trying to really burn my muscles up and uh, doing back-to-back, -back, doing leg press, calf raises, leg press, really burns my legs up and uh, especially after doing all those, uh, all those squats and stuff, I mean like you don't need a lot of weight, you just really need to like try to flex your muscle as you're doing the exercise and that applies to everything, not just legs, like when you, when you do a motion, uh, like you should focus on actually flexing the muscle that is involved and uh, not just moving the weight. At least that's something that I try to do. I feel like it helps me out a lot, and it makes it so that you can get a lot more out of lower weight. So you can do a higher volume. And I'm a fan of volume training more than like, I, I'd, I'd really rather go in the gym and do lighter weight like 10, 12 times than do like huge weight twice, just because I feel, I just feel like I get a lot more out of doing uh, volume training than just huge weight training. That doesn't mean I'd like, I don't like to go heavy sometimes, but it's usually not the focus of my workout. Usually I'll go heavy, in the midst of a volume training session like all it just depends on like how how high i pyramid up right like someday sometimes i'll go to 315 on bench squat and deadlifts if i'm feeling really really good of course i'm only going to do like one or two reps at that weight but if i'm feeling strong you might as well go for it but if i'm not feeling strong it's no worries because i'm going to do like 120 reps anyway so <laughs> like it's going to be okay but yeah right here I'm, my legs are on fire uh but it's it's good i i didn't use to like leg day in the beginning just because it like you know you, you feel like you're gonna puke and it's just like a really bad it's it's not it's not a, a comfortable workout like a lot of your workouts aren't comfortable which, but you actually feel bad and uh, that's something that I I mean I, I was familiar with as a runner but it's different when it's you know this kind of pain but hey man that's from what I hear that's bodybuilding pain so if you wanna if you wanna build some muscle get used to that shit because that's what you wanna feel like and at this point I've sort of begun to uh, appreciate it like I began like I was appreciating the pain of of you know fatigue during running like if you if you learn to enjoy pain and if you learn to to interpret pain instead of like a hey you need to stop this or you're gonna die response which is what your body wants you to feel if instead you interpret pain mentally as yes this is what this is oh this is the 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 message that my body is sending me that I'm doing this right. This is what it feels like when you are gonna build muscle. And at least that's something that, that you know, tips with Bajira. Weird shit that Bajira thinks about when he works out to push himself harder. That's one of the things that I think about is instead of interpreting the pain as negative, you interpret the pain as a sign you're doing it right. And I don't wanna sound like a dumbass, like oh, pain is weakness leaving the body. That's not, I mean, hey, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever gets it done for you in terms of that's the, if that's the thing that you find helpful then go for it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not necessarily in advising pain in all situations as positive, but at least in terms of the gym, if you're, if you're feeling that, 
that familiar muscle burn. That's what you want to feel. You don't want to be like blowing your knees out and like, you know, giving yourself a hernia, but like, that's not the good pain. The good pain is setting your legs on fire, like doing burnouts on, on a, a, a quadricep extension. Like, my legs hurt, dude. This is bad news, but you just, you try to squeeze out, you know, one or two more reps past where you think you can't do anymore. I think that's like an Arnold quote. Somebody wrote that in the comments and I loved it. It was like, you try to do the, that, that, one or, that one or two reps at the end of your set, that's what separates, you know, people who who, who just try and, and the champions, the people who succeed. So, hey, if you want to think about that, those last two reps, those count. Those matter. Arnold says so. So, so hang in there. Keep keep rocking. But uh, I guess I didn't really talk about the quad extensions at all. Uh, one of the things I try to do with those is I'll try to uh, really, really squeeze, but I'll try to squeeze really high up in my quad because your lower quad is going to get involved anyway. It's the upper quad that I try to, try to focus on. So I try to push my legs forward rather than like necessarily like follow the motion of the machine. R rather than bringing them up to the hyperextension, I try to push them forward, which really helps grow my upper quad, I feel like. But of course, you can still squeeze at the very, very end with, with, your, uh, with your quad closer to your knee. Um, that's fine. But you don't really want to like hyper... You don't want to like... Fully extend your knee, like you don't want to hyperextend it. So, just try to try to do, try to achieve the best squeeze you can throughout the motion. And for these, sometimes you'll see my, my legs popping up, like my knees will come up, and that's good stuff. Like you want to do like that right there. Uh, you can try to just like curl it and just use your heel and pull your heel into your butt. But if you can actually like pop your uh, your hips up off that thing and curl your uh, curl your legs like you're doing a bicep curl, uh, that's good stuff. Uh, this is just that awkward moment where I decided to just do calf raises and have my butt in the camera. But hey, I'm leaving it in there because I do calf raises here. Uh, so anytime you're resting from doing like a leg exercise that's not calf raises, you should be doing calf raises. I didn't show it in the video, but every time I take a break from squats, like I'll do my set of squats and then I'll just immediately hit calf raises. And even if you just do them with your body weight, like I mean if you do like a couple thousand calf raises through the course of your workout, like if you do a thousand even, that, like that's... That's a thousand reps of calf raises that you're going to be putting into your calves, and I think that's worthwhile, so... Um, I think th I think this is my last set of the workout, I think. Are we already done with this commentary? Damn, I was like, man, I gotta do commentary over, what, 18 minutes of working out? And it actually wasn't that bad. Uh, hopefully you guys didn't mind me rambling too much. I feel like this wasn't my most helpful video, but hey, it was fun as hell to make, so... If, uh, if I ever end up recording, uh these uh these gym videos and i don't really say anything during the video i guess we can always talk about it after the fact and you can hear me ramble about the the the, the weird shit i think about when i'm working out and uh maybe it'll help you maybe it won't maybe it'll creep you out but <laughs> that's how it goes i guess uh hope you guys enjoyed the video i really had fun making this one actually and uh maybe we'll do it again thanks for watching guys peace